All right, you ignorant pigs, put down your crack pipes and your beer bongs. It's time for HD's Night at the Movies. This night's offering from Beyond the Pit is Sweet Home, 1989. Directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. No relation to the great Japanese director Akira Kurosawa. Written by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Uh, starring Shingo Yamashiro, Nobuko Miyamoto, Nobuko Yamada, Ichiro Furutachi, Fukumi Kuroda, and Juzo Itami. Six people carry the weight of this movie. Now, some of you might be asking, what is Sweet Home? Sweet Home is a 1989 horror movie that was also released in conjunction with a video game of the same name for the, for the SNES. Now, this movie would later go on to spawn the first Resident Evil in 1996. They were trying to make a remake to Sweet Home, and it ended up being so different that it turned in to the biggest... Uh, to one of the biggest video game franchises to have ever existed. Now, uh, this game was directed by uh, Tokuro Fujiwara and then it was developed by Shinji Mikami. The game itself is a turn-based RPG where, like in Resident Evil, you have to manage resources, solve puzzles, and uh, you... You have to figure out a way to get out of the mansion. You'll read 50-year-old diary entries in order to piece together what happened in the Mimiya household. And uh, all of that stuff would translate over to Resident Evil. Now, my first impression of this movie when I uh, saw it for the first time is, why couldn't the 2002 Resident Evil, directed by Paul W. S. Anderson, follow the formula for Sweet Home? You've got a film crew or five cops, five people trapped in a mansion, one of them with zombies, the other one with a malevolent spirit. And uh, the, the thing that gets me about this uh, mansion itself is kind of like a mini boss in, in both the movie, the film, and the 1996 Resident Evil. You know, they all have an ominous, nagging feeling. Uh, you know, if, when you're playing Resident Evil for the first time, I want you to imagine what it would be like going through the hallways and maybe it's like 15 minutes before you even see a zombie. The, you got some tension there, but it's not 15 minutes before you see a zombie. It's really like in the first five or four minutes of that game, you see your first zombie. But imagine if you didn't, and you're just going through the hallways and then you encounter your first zombie. Maybe you solved a couple puzzles first. Uh, the mansion has that kind of tightness about it. The mansion in this movie also is a paranormal entity in and of itself. And it also reminds me of the hotel in The Shining. You never really seem to have a sense of where you are once you're inside, and once you're inside, you really can't leave. Um, a lot of the uh, scenes in this movie take place in the fresco room, and uh, you just really don't ever get a sense of where they are in relation to the fresco room when they're in other parts of the mansion. And when they leave the mansion, you have no idea where the fresco room is inside of the mansion, and I think it's that way by design. You just don't have a sense of your own location. The only problem I ever had I had with uh, uh, Resident Evil 2002 was Paul W. S. Anderson himself, who also sucks Donkey Kong Dong, uh, mostly for the creation of Alice, uh, played by Mila Jovovich, who would later go on to become his wife, and that's an entire other can of worms entirely. You just don't hire your wife to be in your movies. Um, the problem, with, the problem with Anderson's movie is that he did not do story as written. He kind of did a prequel to the video game. And then he took liberties to do whatever the hell he wants, you know. He should have just focused on five cops inside of a mansion that are marooned there because of some evil zombie Dobermans. But he didn't do that, you know. So, uh, you know, just imagine all this with sweet, imagine what the movie could have been if you had the dimly lit atmosphere of the Sweet Home movie and maybe like 32 zombies max in the, and a couple of monsters 
in the first movie if Paul W.S. Anderson just followed story as written and stayed true to the video game. Uh, Sweet Home's mansion is also a secondary antagonist and it just creates an uneasy feeling, uh, which is good because the movie itself is a very slow burn. So the movie consists of one producer, Kazuo, one director, Akiko, one hostess, Asuka, the producer's daughter, Emmy, and the cameraman, Taguchi. The video game would also uh, consist of all five of those characters, and then uh, I think Yamamura would show up later. Uh, so the video game itself would make use of their items that they each bring to the table. Like, in order to clear up broken glass, you have to use Asuka's vacuum cleaner, and that's what her vacuum cleaner does. It removes broken glass so you can walk past. Our crew gains permission to enter the mansion of the great artist Ichiro Mamiya in search of lost frescoes and other works of art that have not yet been seen by the public. They're given this ominous evil looking key that looks like every single key ever used in Resident Evil. And um, the, then when they're on site for the first time, the cameraman kicks over a spirit totem that was holding back the spirit of the of the mansion's ghost and just holding it in place so it wouldn't get too malevolent to use one of its rocks to break into the generator room. And uh, little did they know at the time when he kicked that over that the spirit of the of uh, Ichido's wife, Lady Mimia, is haunting this place. So why is this mansion cursed and haunted? Well, it's said that one cold morning, Lady Mimia woke up Turned on the furnace. The only problem was her toddler son just so happened to be playing inside of the furnace. And uh, needless to say, he was burned alive. She didn't get there in time, and she herself was burned. And then she got it into her head, well, I'm just going to kidnap children from the village and the towns nearby, throw them into the furnace, kill them in the same manner so that my child spirit doesn't get lonely in the afterlife. I guess all of this went under underneath the nose of uh, Ichiro Mamiya, and then the uh, town people got hip to it, stormed the mansion. When she was caught, she committed suicide, and then a few years later, Ichiro dies. Uh, and then the mansion fell into ruin. Now, I think there was there might have been some kind of a angry peasant mob that stormed the mansion, and that's why it's in ruins uh, at this at this current point in time. The trouble doesn't really start for the film crew until um, Fukumi Kuroda, playing Asuka, is possessed inside of the fresco room while washing her hair. Um, when she's possessed, she's she manages to scare off uh, to Gucci. She runs outside and proceeds to dig up the coffin of the dead Lady Mimia's baby that they put him in. So, uh, needless to say, after that, there's a huge surge in spiritual activity throughout the mansion as her spirit is fully awakened. Then the next day, Akiko goes to the gas station where we meet uh, Juzo Itami, Yamamura's character, and he seems to know a little bit about the mansion, and when he finds out they're staying there, he tries to stop her from driving off after she gets gas, and uh, she just uh, basically uh, drives back to the mansion, and that's kind of like the last you see of them until a little bit later. Now, they, uh, they go into a scene in the mansion where they begin work on filming some of the fresco room and everything. And little does our crew know that Asuka has been possessed by the spirit of Lady Mamiya. She then steals the land cruiser that they're driving around in all over the movie and then wrecks it immediately. Now, our five-person film crew is marooned at the mansion, much like our five stars members would be in the first Resident Evil. Now, without giving too much away, the spirit of the Lady Mamiya is actually alive within the shadows and the darkness of the uh, mansion itself. And when these shadows touch you, you are burned severely and then turned into a pile of human goo. Now, when I said this movie is a slow burn, I mean it. Nobody dies until like 43 minutes in. And uh, both of these deaths are just completely terrifying. And uh, the... Uh, the, my favorite part of this movie is when Fukumi Kuroda, Asuka, is running from the shadows and she's just running and she's, and every time she looks back, you just see it in her eyes. Like whatever's chasing her, you don't want a piece of, a piece of that, whatever it is, you know what's chasing her, but like her acting in that moment is just top notch, 100%, 10 out of 10. 
You just like fear in her eyes. So outside the mansion, Emmy, Akiko, and Kazuo are just waiting for something. And this this scene itself, while the unpleasantness is going on inside of the mansion and they cut to a scene outside the mansion, it doesn't really fit. And then Yamamura, Yamamura Juzo Itami, shows back up into the movie and tells Kazuo, Emmy, just to, and uh, Akiko to get off the property immediately and leave the mansion. Of course, they're not going to leave because there's still two people inside, but why were they inside and why were they outside? There's no context for this scene as we head into the last arc of this movie. So they go inside to look for uh, Asuka and Taguchi. Now, one of the things I do know is that this movie had some production problems from like minute one. Uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa had a lot of trouble working with actor producer Juzo Itami and uh, when Kiyoshi finished his version of the movie Juzo Itami ordered a crap ton of reshots and uh, probably spent a quarter of a million dollars or somewhere in that neighborhood to do shit tons of reshots which means that Kiyo that either Kiyoshi Kurosawa or Toho have a director's cut of this film. Now, another strange thing about this movie is that Toho has never released this movie on DVD. They have never even released a Blu-ray. And as far as I know, it only has a regional release in Japan on VHS. And that's it. That's where it ended. And, uh, you know, I just want to mention, you know, this would be a good film to allow to lapse into public domain because Toho hasn't even cared about its apparent connection to Resident Evil. So, you know, I mean, not only would I like to see the director's cut of this movie, I would like to see a remaster of this movie and maybe a dubbing. Back to the movie. Now we go now our four characters they go back into the mansion to look for Taguchi and ask Taguchi and Asuka only to find them dead. Now uh Emmy is possessed, Nobuko Yamada, and uh, the Mamiya's spirit takes hold of her as she is the youngest person in the party that's present at the time. And uh, the rest of the movie deals with Kazuo and Akiko trying to get Emmy back with help from Yamamura. Now, I don't want to give too much of this movie away because a lot of people haven't seen Sweet Home. If you're a Resident Evil fan, you have. Maybe I'll do a different version of this review later. Now, you come into some really good monster moments within the last 20 minutes of this film. And all of the special effects were done by Dick Smith. And if you know, if you've ever, if you've heard the name before, Dick Smith did the makeup and creature effects for The Exorcist. He did Trancers, and he did all of the. He led all of the work in Sweet Home, and the final monster has is probably the most menacing thing, from menacing image from my blood-soaked nightmares, and um, this all. This showdown with this menacing creature culminates as a, in a metaphorical way of two mothers battling it out for the soul of a woman that can hardly be called a child. You have the Lady Mamiya, who, who is a mother, and then you have uh, Akiko, who is uh, an allegory for a mother. And uh, it, it's elaborated that she had a miscarriage. And so she's not a mother, but she might have been a mother. And they're battling it out for the soul of a, I want to say, 19, maybe 20-year-old girl. So uh, without giving too much more away, let's get into the, some of those Slayer Pit totals. We have three dead bodies, one corpse baby, one evil mansion, one sandstorm, gratuitous RPG music...
Product placement with Toyota Land Cruiser, three jump scares, giant axe foreshadowing, one case of smoking while pumping gas, one HR Giger infant coffin, one Land Cruiser wreck, one bump on the head, two cases of possession, three cases of people being melted, one wrench bashing to the head, one and a half piles of human goo, one giant axe to the head, one liquor induced musical number, one guy melted so badly he turns into a pile of dust. And, uh, you know, th that scene where he is melted, it even puts the Nazi face melting scene to shame. And, uh, you know, I mean, just w what a scene that was. I'm not going to elaborate who got melted because I want you to watch this movie and discover this movie because it's free on YouTube. But let's go back to one panty shot, two what in the hell Japan moments. What the hell, Japan? What the hell? This has been another what in the hell, Japan moment. One grotesque evil monster, Slayer Pit Awards to Kiyoshi Kurosawa as best director, Dick Smith for best special effects. I mean, holy cow. Uh, makeup and creature effects on point. Eat your heart out, Greg Nicotero. Nobuko Miyamoto as best actress. This movie was hers the entire time. And uh, in the last 20 minutes of this movie, she becomes like Sigourney Weaver in, a, at the end of Aliens, where she's going to get Newt out of the hive and get and try to get off the planet. And uh, she really sells it. And, um, you know, I, I, I think about some of the characters in this movie. I don't think that there's a character that I dislike. Um, Taguchi maybe because he's a little weird when he's around Asuka and they don't flush out what their relationship was exactly. And then Fumiko Kurata, best actress for just selling the fear of the dark with her eyes alone. And then Shingo Yamashiro as the dad who wouldn't let his daughter go. HD gives this movie four skulls. Check it out for the month of Halloween. You won't be disappointed. Anyway, as you know, if you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, always hit me up on Instagram. That's usually the best way to get a hold of me is Instagram DMs. And uh, if you really want to help my channel grow, consider checking me out on Rumble, Soy Free Warhammer. Link in the description below. But as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until I see you again, uh, keep watching horror movies. And stay metal, my friends. Have a happy and safe Halloween. Kids, don't go to any porches that don't have uh, lights on. And don't go inside anybody's houses. And we'll see you next year, folks. ニホンエンガのクライミに気をつけろ。邪悪なクリーチャーが君を待ち受けているぞ。みんなのことなんか知らないもん。僕は一人で逃げるんだもん。なんてやつは真っ先に殺されてしまう。みんなで知恵を絞り、お互い助け